This is a 66-year-old male. Um, he's a chronic smoker and drinker for 40 years, and his history of TRP, state bladder, and recurrent DVT of a left lower limb with um, pulmonary embolism before. Um, he um, has a newly diagnosed CA mid esophagus um, clinically, stage T2 to 3, N1, and M0, presented with dysphagia earlier this year. OGD was done and found a tumor from a 30 to 35 centimeters from incisors, with a biopsy showing squamous dysplasia. However, on the PET CT, it shows a um, corresponding tumor um, at the mid esophagus with a white centimeter right subcarinal node and no distal metastasis. So currently our plan for this patient is for neoadjuvant chemo RT, then for minimally invasive three-stage esophagectomy. This is the PET CT and also the endoscopic view um, of this patient's tumor. And so today we'll be doing um, EOS um, for the fiducial marker placement. Good morning. Hi, Shannon. Oh, Good morning. Hello. Uh, we're actually not ready yet. <laughs> I just did an OGD uh, for the patient, and the tumor is uh, from 28 centimeter to 35. And uh, there was a bit of a difficulty in passing the magnifying endoscope. So I'll see if I can pass the linear scope because it's a bit larger than the um, the magnifying scope. So there are if we are to place for pseudomarcus, there are actually two options. So we can either the easier option is to uh, use a linear scope. And, uh, but sometimes, uh, especially tumors in our locality are usually very advanced and tumors are obstructive. So if the scope cannot pass through the tumor, then uh, what we do is uh, we first use uh, a nasal scope to pass a guide wire to the stomach and we change it to um, uh, the EBA scope. But it's actually a bit cubosome. So if we can use, if we can pass a linear scope, then it's always easier. Seems so Shannon, um, can you I've talk about it. the uh, indication first? Why do we need the fiducial marker? <laughs> like, for example, in this patient? Um, usually for our uh, practice, um, if the patient needs uh, chemo radi irradiation, then uh, it's, we would put a marker at the proximal and distal end of the tumor, so then the radiologist, uh, radiographer, uh, the oncologist can uh, target the um, the markers and give uh, radiation. So our oncologists actually love uh, the fiducial marker because um, it gives them an easier targeting, especially for lesions that are not very um, obvious on a CT scan. And uh, they would just target our markers and uh, give the uh, radiation dose. And when inserting the markers, we try always to include the lymph nodes also. So apart from the tumor, uh, we would scan for uh, surrounding lymph nodes and to see um, if uh, our marker could also include it. And the irradiation field can also include the lymph nodes uh, for a better response. So um, um, when the oncologists they do a radiation planning, in fact, the esophagus is often very collapsed. Uh, and uh, it's actually quite hard for them to, to, to visualize the um, starting and uh, the end of tumor. If you have a very big tumor, of course, it's very easy to see. But the proximal and distal edges is often very uh, blurred uh, on a CT, uh, especially if the subject is collapsed. So, so the markers we do insert, it helps to uh, localize the proximal and distal uh, margins. And the other thing uh, is also um, the oncologist uh, also thinks that we can see submucosal invasion much better with EUS. Um, and uh, we also try to include uh, visualized lymph nodes within the radiation field. Um, so when placing the markers, apart in, in addition to the tumor, we also try to include uh, lymph nodes which may be present around uh, the uh, tumor. So Shannon, what are you doing now? So I think I've localized the tumor. So the, um, as you can see on uh, the EUS view, uh, this hypoechoic lesion is actually the tumor. Um, it's like a three-quarter circumferential tumor. So um, first we need to stage the T staging to see its local invasion. So you can see right here that it has involved um, the adventitia. So it's a locally, it's a T3 tumor. And I'm pulling back my scope uh, to the proximal extent. So here's the end of the tumor. And also, do, do we see a lymph node somewhere here? Yeah, Around it's here. There are some, a couple of nodes yeah. here, right? So probably, if you just go by the tumor itself, the marker should be here. But uh, we try to include the lymph nodes also. So then we probably will in insert the marker right here. Okay.
Can you show us on X ray what, it, what is the level of okay. your. your, your um, by endoscopy, it's 28 to 35. So. Um, let's see. I'm going to put the marker at the lymph node for the proximal one. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And distally, are you planning to just put it at the uh, tumor or? Uh, distally, I don't. I need to see a bit more clear of whether there are lymph nodes. So the tumor is here. And these are vessels. And so I think the, the oncologist in our center actually, as you said, likes the marker a lot because without the marker, they usually use the CT and they mark five centimeters above and below what they thought is no the tumor margin thing. so that they can really irradiate everything. But with the judicial marker, they only use a one say CM margin. So in that case, you can focus the radiation really onto the tumor to get the best um, outcome possible. So I don't see any uh, distal lymph nodes. So I guess for the distal marker, we we'll just put it right here, right here right? Um, at the distal end of the okay. tumor. Can we just check the X-ray position? Okay. Cool. So uh, before uh, got. So before uh, when we first started to do this procedure, we actually insert the markers intratumorally because um, for CA pancreas they inserted within the tumor. But then subsequently we were called by our oncologist to say that on the planning CT the markers have actually migrated. So. Um, we then, try, we then switched our technique to inserting the marker submucosally. So, um, but as you see, the esophagus is actually very uh, thin. So to insert it submucosally without any injection would be very difficult. So what we do now is that we um, inject the submucosal layer with um, a mixture of hyaluronic acid and saline. Uh, to inflate the layer before uh, we insert uh, the markers. Choose hyaluronic acid, um, not just saline. Um, it's a mixture because uh, we use a 19 gauge needle. If it's all hyaluronic acid, then uh, it's difficult to inject. But uh, because if we use all saline, it's also feasible. But then because we need to change the needle, um, sometimes. Um, Sometimes it would get be deflated um, afterwards. How my whole gang? Yeah. So with uh, hyal hyaluronic acid, it stays in the uh, SM submucosal layer much longer. So we like to do that. Enlarged. Sorry. <coughs> Can we have the US image um, on the on the center? Yes. So you aim for the submucosa in the injection. Okay, so you can see my needle, which is right here. And uh, so we sometimes tend to overshoot a little and pull back and inject. So we inject a little first to see if we're in the right plane. So that's very nice. So Shannon is in the submucosal plane already. You can see um, this is a submucosa and you can see the solution inflated very nice okay so now we can change uh, to uh, for digital marker needle so it's very nice if you use a linear scope there is actually a pre-made uh, needle from the cook and okay, uh, we have the uh, external view just to show this quickly you know so this is the device so that's a handle on one side. It's preloaded with four fiducials. So with each uh, click, you, you would deploy one fiducial. So the, um, the needle is in the SM submucosal plane. So um, let's show the X-ray as well. X-ray uh, magnification, please. Okay, so um, Shannon's going to deploy the fiducial. So you can see that it's actually pushing out. So when you push out a little, we tend to uh, withdraw the needle a little so then it doesn't uh, get coiled too much. So now you can see that it's out. Okay, and if you pull back the needle, uh, you can see that it stays. 
Um, of course, a safer thing is uh, to flush saline to make sure um, that the marker is still here. But now because we have the uh, EUS view, uh, you can see that the marker is well within the submucosal um, injection. So it's actually quite safe uh, that the, n the marker will not, um, will not dislodge. The marker is very clearly seen on the EUS image mm. as well. So it's very securely located. So after this, uh, we will pull back uh, to the proximal um, end of the tumor. So here all along, these are tumors. So this is the proximal end of the tumor, but we wanted to include the lymph nodes also. So then you see, um, yeah. so these are uh, the lymph nodes that we wanted to include. There are a couple. Yep. Yeah, right there. The AP window or? This is the AP window, yeah, correct. So this is the uh, aortic arch, pulmonary artery, so it's the AP window. Is there any limitation of size of the limb node? Sorry? Uh, yeah, we can uh, measure it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any uh, size? That's I mean, the small size or a large size uh, limb node you select? So um, I think we will try to include the uh, entire bunch, which is um, uh, right here, because um, the radiation will include the entire uh, field. Um, the size is not big, it's six millimeters, but the morphology looks very malignant. So um, we probably won't do a biopsy and just go with the uh, chemo radiation. Could you explain about the uh, malignant morphology precisely? So malignant morphology, yes. Um, in general, uh, if it's benign, uh, it tends to be more oval shaped or triangular shaped. Uh, there is usually a hilum okay. that can be seen on EOS. Um, so with that uh, lesion just now, um, I think those limbs not, not look so malignant. Uh, those are round, hypoechoic, uh, and a loss of the fatty hilum. hilum. So although the size might not be large, um, they surely look so malignant. Yeah, so it's so very round them in a radiation and homogeneous, and um, uh, so it looks uh, uh, very suspicious on metastasis. Uh, so now we are uh, ready. The needle is at, at where we want to inject the, the um, solution. So first we inject a little. So it's not uh, showing up, so it's probably not in not yet. Inside, yeah. yeah. So you might want to push down a little, little. So let's try here. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I think you've injected into the subucosa. You can mm -hmm. see the SM layer raised quite well. So I think uh, people, apart from esophageal cancers, people are also putting in fiducials for uh, pancreatic as well as uh, dun 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 rectal dun dun cancers in some institutions. I think for pancreatic, it's mainly to help with <coughs> um, a, um, chemo radiation. Um, in pancreas, the requirement for proximal and distal Extend is not that high because they just want to localize ah, the um, tumor. So we just need to put in two. Um, maybe we should go back and this because the is, uh, um, And um, for pancreatic cancers, we just need to be uh, have the um, fiducial two centimeters apart. So on x-ray, you can see the distal marker, which is around three vertebral columns down. Okay, so on EOSV, you can see that the marker is out. And I'll which... Yeah, right there. Okay. And on x-ray... 
An X-ray. Yep. You can see it right there um, at the pr uh, US probe. Okay. Should we flush it a little bit? Okay. Flying, right? Okay, so we just flushed some uh, saline. So the marker hasn't moved, so we're pretty happy. So any questions? I don't need. Mm. I don't need. Yes. Uh, you place the sub-mucosal layer? Yes, yes, in the submucosal layer. There are some uh, saline you have injected, uh, especially the distal part. The uh, first D will uh, change the position. So the with both saline. markers in the submucosal layer, they actually don't change much. So in the past, um, uh, we used to put it intratumorally. So Shannon did a study, uh, tried to look at the outcomes of intratumoral versus submucosal. So, uh, what were your findings? I uh, actually showed that uh, injecting in the submucosal lesion uh, space actually decreased uh, the rate of migration. Actually, for uh, submucosal injection, there were no migration at all. So, we did, uh, we looked at the, the planning CT and also the reassessment CT three months later. So, for submucosal injection, there was no migration for both time slots. But for uh, intratumoral injection, uh, there was a 40% migration rate at the planning CT, which is one week after the insertion. And for uh, the reassessment CT three months later, the uh, migration rate was up to 80%. So, uh, then we all, since then, we all switched to uh, submucosal injection. We also had a question before on comparing uh, EGD uh, guided injection. So um, there was a question that was asked to us as well. So I think in one workshop we actually did that and we actually do an EGD guided uh, fiducial marker insertion and on EUS we found that the fiducial marker was actually not anywhere close to the submucosa. It was uh, put in somewhere um, outside the lumen. So I think the EUS guided method is much more precise. We check a uh, superficial extent by any BI or something because uh, sometimes barrets it usually does not have a superficial extension, but a squamous cell carcinoma has. A uh, yes, that's very true. So always we couple the EUS with the NBI. So before the EUS, we actually did an NBI first. So if there is any suspicion of uh, really early extension of the tumor that we might miss on EUS, we will mark it on the X-ray. So then on EUS, we would uh, go for the same um, location and in insert the uh, markers there. Thank you very much, Shannon okay, thank and you. Anthony. Thank you. Very nice demonstration.